you know, we then win the Charity Shield at Wembley with the Brucey bonus. So we not only have we <laughs> match Liverpool, we then go and we then go and beat them at Wembley, yeah. albeit a Charity Shield, but it was a big win against the you know an unbelievable team. They were European champions as well. So yeah. that was again, that was another little box tick. It was another little uh, affirmation, and I, I remember hearing. Uh, it might have been Mark Lawrence. It might have been. I mean, it's hard for me to say Lawrenson because he doesn't ever say anything good about Everton. But I remember him saying, "They knew after the Milk Cup final, they were like, these are coming for us, and they're a proper team." That's that was his words. After what they yeah. said to each other after the Milk Cup final. So to then play them again at the first day of the season and beat them, we end up beating them three times that season. Played them three times, beat them three times, and you know. It, that, for, as a fan, is the belief starts to come. But like you said, yeah. remember the Spurs game? We're running around at the FA Cup about half two or something, quarter three. Yeah. You no, know, wasn't, that the, wasn't that the youth team, wasn't that? The that was the youth team, Ian Lawson, that's what it is. Youth Martin, team, had, we had two they, trophies. They, yeah. they won the FA Youth Cup the same season as us, so they, they, yeah, they yeah. did the trophy presentation. They did they? the trophy so, thing. Yeah. He's got eight and each scores a pen, and it's like normal service resumed here. Let's go. And then John Chidozzi and Clive Allen tore us apart. We, we end up getting beef for one. But, well, I mean... Well, remember it very well, mate. I'm thinking, oh, no, here we go again. Here we go, yeah. But, I mean, it was, we went, obviously, the first two games. We then go and wear this beautiful kit here at Chelsea on a Friday night. Kevin Littleton and we win the game 1-0, which was live on the BBC. It was a massive win for us. But, you know, ticking along, you score your first goal of the season against Southampton at home in a 2-2 and then score three games on the run, showing your prowess in front of goal. Um, but I want to talk to you just very quickly about the European Cup Winners Cup and UCD, which was, when we got them, it was at 8-0 yeah. away, 9-0 at home, yes please, and we drew 0-0 away. I mean, what, what was that like, going and playing, going and playing in Dublin? I remember going to Dublin and staying at the airport in a hotel. And then uh, in those days, it was always a police escort from the ground, from the hotel to the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, oh, we need we need we need forty five minutes to get to the ground or something. So these four or five outriders come. We get on the team bus at some silly time because Howard didn't like getting there too early. He didn't like people hanging around the ground. He wants us to be there no more than an hour and 15, an hour and 10 minutes before kickoff. In those days, it was half seven kickoff. So I think we're on the bus at half past five. Mm -hmm. You know, so off we go. And these outriders stopped everything on the roads. We were going through red lights at 90 mile an hour because there was an Irish driver in, a, in, a, in an Irish coat. We were going like a lunatic. And then they got the ground in about 15 minutes. So we had that long round the ground to, to wait to get ready. And we're walking on, was it, I think it was Tolka Park, I mean, it was Tolka Park, and now we're, we're walking around, we're looking at, and we're, we were confident. And to be honest, yeah. we, we, we did play well against them. We just couldn't yeah. put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, we had yeah. chance after chance and couldn't score. So you're, we get the net, you're all thinking, oh, here we go again. No, how can we not score against a team of part timers? But you see how hard it is sometimes in the FA Cup when a non league time team play a, 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 Premier, a top side. Look at Coventry yeah. two years after winning the FA Cup, losing to United. It happens. Mm. But in the re in the second game, again we 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 had chance. We just couldn't score. We got yeah. one, and I, I'm not sure. The other day at the post, or never made a save in it in the late late the last seconds. Yeah, and we're going. We could have been out. It could have been a totally different season if that ball had ended up in the back of our net. But yeah. we didn't play badly. We just couldn't mm. score, and then. No. We scrape through, you're waiting for the draw, you're, you're all thinking, oh, let's have one of the bigger teams. But no, you don't want the bigger teams on the way through in there. Uh, I think it was, was it Bratislava the next game? Bratislava. I think it was in the Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Grace scores his, scores away in Bratislava. I think it was, yeah. was it three, I think we got a, a, a Goodison Park. Going on three. And then um, yeah. we're through and oh, then Sittard, Andy Gray's great set of uh, hat-trick against Sittard and we went That's away cool. and and there was semi final and you're thinking who are you gonna get? We get well, the, pause we for the semi. Pause okay. for that because we'll we'll go we'll go through the season book. That's an unbelievable game, so I want to talk about. I mean, the two things I remember from UCD was we had to wear our away kit at home in the second well, that, leg. That, 
But that was the rule. I think that was the way for rule at the time. The the, the, the visiting team wore their, their home kits. The home team had to change to their away yeah, kit. It was, it was the way for rule yeah. at the time, yeah. Mad. So we had that on sharp, scored after 10 minutes and then we just couldn't score. And then oh. they got a free kick. I remember they got a free kick. It must have been the last kick of the game. And I remember just sitting there thinking, this drops in, that's it, we're out. And Nev made a brilliant save and it, it was berserk. But I mean, we lo- I remember we lost it. After that, we went to Arsenal, got beat 1-0 at Arsenal. Charlie Nicholas scored the penalty. and But then we won 10 games on the run, which was just showing you that this team was starting. There was 10 consecutive games. I mean, within that was the 1-0 at Anfield, which you talked about, which as an yeah. Evertonian was just incredible. <laughs> 14 years since we beat them there to score. The goal we did was incredible. But it was a, we were brilliant as well. It was just a brilliant performance. And yeah. then that week, we, we won in, we won in uh, Czechoslovakia, like you say, Bray said that after four minutes at Bratislava. Then on the Saturday, we beat United 5-0. Yeah, in one of the best games we've been involved in. That was a superb performance for everybody. One of the really best performances football. I've ever seen from Everton because it should have been 10. It was five. They were a good side, by the way. Yeah. And we absolutely blitzed them from start. I mean, the only surprise is that you never scored. We scored five goals and you didn't get one of them. That was the only I've surprise. Got to, I've got to share them around, Baz, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. Share them <laughs> and then we go to United four days later and beat them in the League Cup 2-1 as yeah. well which you know that's you winning at Old Trafford the year before going to Old Trafford and winning again uh, you know and beat Bratislava and the first game we lost after the 10 straight wins was Grimsby at home in the Cup and we, we had about that day as well. we had about 40 attempts at goal they only yeah. had one chance just Paul Wilkinson 90th scored. minute scored later on didn't he yeah. and then that's we signed him minute. On yeah. the back of that, but we—I yeah, remember yeah. that was a horrible, wet, stinking night as well. And uh, we just, again, we just couldn't score. It's not no. as if we didn't create chances. If you play play well and don't create chances, but we played well, and we just couldn't score. You we know, but saying that, that's, maybe, maybe getting out the Milk Cup helped us. We didn't want that too many competitions that year, did we? No, we, we didn't want to win everything. But uh, we had a, we then put a decent little run together. Then a couple of we lost our own to Chelsea four three on. Um, the 22nd yeah, of, I, of I, I December. Was pants, I, think. I was pants up. I was pants up. Well, Gordon day, Davis got a hat trick, didn't he? Yeah, I was pants I was rubbish. Okay. Well, I was. I, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out for it. I'm just saying we lost. Oh, I'm telling you, mate. I was crap that day, I tell you. Well, you know what? I'm surprised four, we get dropped. Four <laughs> days later, it's a good job he didn't because we went to Sunderland and won 2 1 and you got both of them on I Boxing did. Day. Yeah. But uh, that started the. There was. After that. You will yeah, you scored in them goals. There was nine straight wins on the run. Right? After the Chelsea game. Yeah. But we went twenty eight games unbeaten yeah. from Chelsea till we lost to Nottingham Forest on the eleventh of May. Yeah. Brilliant. So, um, you don't realise how easy it is to get into these these runs, you know. Um, um we we just we just moved, we just moved up. there's we did lots of videos out recently because of the Howard's Way film and some yeah. of the football we played. I didn't realise how much good football we played until you actually sit back and watch. As a player, you know you're playing good football. Yeah. And you can watch as a fan. But in those days, there wasn't a great deal of TV football around. So we no, did not no. see a great deal of our, of our games. But some of the football we played, when you look at the videos, it was, it was brilliant. You talk about pressing. We pressed high up. We had a high line. We had, we had energy. We had pace. You know, we, we we played some really, really good stuff. And I didn't realise since I see a lot of these videos recently of how good we actually played. But when you say 28 games undefeated from the 19th of December, sometime it is, it was just an amazing time to be around. We, we, we grew as a team, we grew as a group of players, we grew as a club, and as fans, you grew as well with us. Unbelievable. 28 games on me now. I've said this to to other other players we spoke to we go three games now with Elm beating I'm dancing in the streets so 28 games and 10 wins yeah. on the run then a draw then 9 wins on the run I mean I'm obviously you know I'm so when I go back over it it brings it all back and you just think I was so lucky to witness this yeah. team because it was incredible I mean you scored come up with a massive goal against Ipswich at home at the street end in the cup um, to, to keep us in that you know, after Sheeds has two free kicks and he, yeah, I'll take it again. And that was a mistake for their, one of their goals as well. 
and the wet rushed over never let ball through his legs one of their goals yeah, and it was yeah, Kevin yeah. Rush, I think it was yeah Kevin it's Rush, that was my that was my first goal at the street end all my other goals was the come at, the, at the at the far end and everyone says what's your most important goal and it's gonna it's, you're gonna bring it up in a minute but without that equaliser in the last minutes of against Ipswich there's no semi-final so yeah, for me yeah. my most important goal is the is the Ipswich game is the, the Ipswich equaliser one. Because that, if I don't get that, we're out the cup and there's well, no semi-final where I get all the praise and all the all the adulation for the goal I scored. But that, that semi-final, that equaliser against Ipswich, there isn't a semi-final. There's no replay, we're out the cup. That was, look a, at, look, that was another look day that goal. goal. Yeah. Go Reedy, oh, go Reedy plays the ball into Pat Van Der Nau, who's, play, who's on the right-hand side. Of, What's he doing up there, Pat? What are you doing? You should be back there defending. A little flick over his head, he just turns and volleys it. And I just made an instinctive run into an area. And the ball's there, it's in the back of the net. And you start thinking, is it luck? Or is it that never day, never say die attitude that we had? We were, we, what, what's one thing we had? We were never, ever defeated. No. If we conceded one, we'd try and get one back and get another one. If we yeah. lost 4 3, there was no doom and gloom, or we lost what there was no doom. We go again the next day. We had a, an amazing belief in the group of lads that we were never defeated. And that just comes from, that came from nowhere. You go back to 18 months before the um, Ipswich game, even 15 mm. months. We were, we were struggling. We were 16, 17 in the league. We were really struggling. Yeah, but yeah. that belief, just that momentum just took us. And that's what, that's what you don't see so much in teams now. I don't think teams have the same mental strength that we had. Yeah, we no. were getting abuse from the team. We were getting stick at times. But, once you start getting into that run of games and that belief in yourself and the group of lads around you, it becomes so much easier to keep progressing. And that's what we had. That belief in that squad, I think, was just stepping to none. And that yeah, it was, game, it was unbelievable. a good example of, of what we did. Pat shouldn't have been there, but he was. I probably shouldn't have been where I was, but I was. We're still on the cup. The rest is history. Yeah, incredible. I mean, it massively. Inc- again, and that, we played well that day and... You know, you come up with a late goal. We then win it with Sharpie. Uh, and then by Munich away, you know, there's 67,000 Olympic Stadium and they were an unbelievable side as well. And go out there and, and draw nil-nil, which is a, a brilliant result, really. And a couple of players I spoke to said we were a bit disappointed after that because we felt we had a chance to win it over there. But I, I, I mean, as a fan, nil-nil, it's get them back to Goodison and see what we can do and that's kind of, that's how it played out wasn't it? Yeah we, Howard made a couple of changes I think Sharp made a front on his own he played five in midfield and because yeah. Andy was injured and I was up against Big Uli Hernes big six foot four hairy German beast and you know I had, I had me and Rats had a good a good game together we worked really well together we worked hard but Howard was able to change the team and everyone knew the roles what to do and yeah maybe we, we could have won over there but we came away very, very pleased with the nil-nil. Very mm. pleased with the nil-nil. Obviously, you always want the away goal, but we, we were a bit disappointed. You're right. We were a bit disappointed. We had played well, but the important thing was we hadn't conceded. We went yeah. one down. Um, yeah. And we came back the following week to a monumental occasion in the club's history. Um, the lads will always say that the, the return leg against Bayern it's the one game they'll take to the grave with them. Um, mm. Purely because I've never been involved in an atmosphere like that in any stadium I've played a game of football. And that includes going to Wembley, includes going to Rotterdam for the final. Mm. The build-up to the game, getting to the ground was was just, there was thousands of people outside Goodison Bottom. It felt like there was 150,000 people around the ground when we got to the game because we had to leave early from the hotel and we came down the back of the street ending the coach and we were literally like, hey, Jimmy Martin must have had like Moses parked in the waves as he's driving down, the people get squashed against the walls. It was 10 deep by the side and they're all singing and chanting, just like it was at Wembley for the FA Cup final less than a year before that. The excitement, the belief, the, the fans and and then we came out for the game and the roar was just immense. It was, it was brilliant. And again, we didn't play badly in the first half, but we come no, in no. and they scored the goal and someone's got the volume button and gone, Yeek! and just turned the volume down. It was, whoa, what's happened silence, here? Silence, Wally. What's happened here? It was complete, not a silence. And we came in at half-time and I said, look, boys, you're the better team. You're playing some great football. 
Just keep doing what you're doing. Get the ball in the box and the street end will suck it in for you. Lucky for us, Gary throws a long ball in. I think Andy might have just rearranged Argentola's nose a little bit. And then um, Sharpie scores and we're back in the game. And then another free kick and it's Sharpie's turn this time to rearrange that. Argon Tyler's nose. So he went that way with Andy Gray and came back that way with Shelby. Um, and Andy put his 2 1 up. And, but the roar when that first goal went in was just. But I say about this, this sunny cup in the ground in, in the lounge, which is 85 at Goodison Park. And when I came out of the second half, the roar, the roar made the back of my hair, the back of my neck stand up. It was incredible. So that made me for that. It must have made the Bayern Munich players feel a bit intimidated because yeah. the roar was immense. You know, yeah. they only had about 200 fans there, I think, the Germans. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't them there. But the, the Everton fans just roared us onto the pitch for the second. We came out second half and we knew that they were with us. Yeah. You know, and the, and the goal gets them going again and the second goal, we're on a high. And, you know, I remember the third goal going in and Trevor, we in away and then, the Rotterdam song came out, you know, and there was there was then the carnage started. I need tickets. Oh no, here we go again. Cut, yeah, cut we go again. You need tickets, 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 shit, shit, this, this. And um, you know, to, to to think that 15, 16 months earlier we were 15 to the table, we'd been booed off at Goodison Park. If you'd have said in 16 months we'd have gone from where we were to what we just achieved, the first ever Everton side to reach a European final, you, it, it's it's it is literally pinch me stuff, mind-blowing that this can happen to a club, but it does, if you get a group of players that believe in each other and work with each other and, and believe in the manager, these things happen, but it mm. doesn't come overnight, it comes with hard work and, and dedication and a little bit of punishment, a little bit of dips before the peaks, and, and we proved that we had one or two dips, but when we got to the peaks, the peaks were just phenomenal. The in between, I mean, it was, that was the best best game I've ever been through. The most, the loudest noise I've ever heard in my life. It was unbelievable. But in between that, that sandwich, the the Luton game and the, the FA Cup semi final, and there's another one. You know, we we go to buy in on a Wednesday night draw, nil nil, incredible result, and then we've got another big game at the weekend, which is Luton in the FA Cup, and uh, Ricky Hill scored, didn't he? I think. Reedy needs to be a bit stronger, to be fair. Like, but Ricky, <laughs> Ricky Hill scores. So, and we always say you know, there's a little touch on Gary as about to clear the ball. He gets nudged and can't clear the yeah, ball. Yeah. But it was a great finish. But the Bayern oh, Munich game was we, was, we went, and it was the only time in European football we stayed over after the game. We always flew straight back. Right. Yeah. Neville says about sticking out and half in the wardrobe when he came back drunk after the night. Night out in Munich. It, it was a it was a good night out. Um, so maybe we uh, we had a few too many of the beer killers in Munich on the on the Wednesday night. But we turned up off there on the Saturday. And we we were we didn't get going. Luton were up for it. Their fans were up for it. Um, although we said we weren't up for it, we weren't allowed to because I think they played very well early on. They, they, they put did, us yeah. on the back foot. They 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 attacked us. They put us under pressure. And how it's half time, come on, boys, we're better than this, we can do it, keep going. And then, and it, we keep pushing and we keep pushing, and we're not quite getting there. The fans are still with us, Luton fans are waving the straw boat, just thinking we're all going to Wembley. And with about 10 minutes to go, I, I, I look over and how it goes, up you go, son. And I, if you look at it, I'm, I'm, I'm up front for the last 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah. The normal time is how it sends me up front. So we, we you win the free kick, kick don't you? Well, there was a little, there was a little nudge of me back. I made a bit more of it. Oh, no, it was a no, foul. That no, was yeah, but it was a free kick. Yeah, and, and Rats just hammers it forward. I go for the ball. I put Mick Harper. I think it's Steve Foster coming through. But yeah, I do get nudged yeah. in the back, and I go over. He gives the free kick. Um, you know, I'm, I'm up there, and you, and you know, there's divide in the in the, the old halt end. It's this side is is yeah. orange, and, and this side is blue, and. And this side, all the way around us was blue bottom out the section of our region. They're all, we're all going to Wembley. And mm -hmm. I think she's, whether you admit or not, I don't think he struck it particularly well. And after no. the seventh bounce, he went in the corner. And it was absolutely, we, we always say that Leslie went down like the Tour de France. He went down in stage one, stage two, stage three. <laughs> or Leslie, he couldn't get down there. Um, yeah. uh, and it's in the corner. And there's, what, minutes left of the game? We're yeah, three there. minutes. And, and you look at the ground, it literally erupted with virtually three quarters, if not more, of the ground erupted yeah. in, in Royal Blue. You know, players on, fans on the pitch, yeah, we were in. 
but we've, we've still not finished. We've still not. No. So I, by this stage, I've got my nose broken. I've got a big black eye. I've been your knees throbbing like mad. I've been walking the knee a couple of times. Yeah. So coming out of, in those days, you, you, you're only allowed to talk to your manager straight after the final whistle. There was no yeah. half time or extra time. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. Howard kept us in. Come on, boys, we do this. Come on. And those days, remember, there was one. I think there was one sub in those days. Mm. I remember, right, we have got second half, first half extra time, it's nip and tuck. And then at half time of extra time, they took off Mick Offord. I think they were going to say, we'll take him to a second game, they will take him to yeah, a replay. Yeah. And I looked over, and at number nine, oh, thank you, Lord, they're taking Mick Offord off. Because <laughs> he battered me. He absolutely yeah. mullered me all over the park. Elbows, feet, digs, everything. I was black and blue all over. But... In that second half, they, they, I think they put another defender on midfield to try and tighten it up a little bit. We were getting stronger and stronger and stronger yeah. as the game went on. We, that's why I say extra time never phased us because we, we, we could raise it and go again. Some teams can't do extra time because they're burnt out after 90 minutes. We kept going and going and going. And again, we, we get that opportunity and, and Sheeds gets the free kick and, and again... Our Gary Stevens says, go on, son, over, go, go, go and get one of your gold for your lad. And I'm, okay, guys, my nose over here, mate. And I'm, I'm hobbling up <laughs> the like this. And um, she's puts a perfect ball. And she's always say that, and I always say, it's not about the goal scorer, it's about the ball in. And Kevin Sheedy and Trevor Stephen very rarely hit the first man. They always yeah, put the ball yeah. in an area. And that area was occupied by me, Andy, Sharpie, or Inchi or Teddy, whoever was playing at the time. Yeah, we didn't yeah. we didn't look for the ball. The ball found us because we made the runs and the ball was put in the right area. Yeah. And the ball was just in an absolute perfect spot. And I've got up there above me, a little nudging um Steve Foster, a little Ricky, and I've got it down and then I just remember seeing Pandem. I went I went like a man, and I put my arm in set off. But what would you do? You just scored the win and go on the semi-final. What do you do? You don't stand there going, Mm, what's going to do now? <laughs> My celebrations were never planned. None of our celebrations were planned. None of these plans you see now where they do the ducks and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. It was just, and I just set off. I remember Andy Gray catching me. Literally, both feet came off the ground as he grabbed my neck. I went up and came back down on my feet. Mm. Then I got mobbed by Andy and mobbed by players, mobbed by fans. It was just absolute carnage. And I look back and go, yeah, I got the winning goal, but I wish I had one of those fans on the pitch celebrating with them because as a fan, I've said this to many people, as an Everton fan, I haven't seen Everton lift a trophy in my life. I was only six in 69, 70 when we won the league. Yeah. 95, I, I had a knee operation and was doing an FA coaching band, so I didn't go to Wembley in 95. So in my Everton career of 40 odd years, whatever it is, 50 years, I've it's probably 55 years since the baby was born, 55 years, I've never seen Everton lift a trophy. So all my mates have been to Wembley and Rotterdam and being on the pitch at Villa Park. Yeah. Being a player is different to being a fan. I want to be a fan. I want to go and jump at the Fabulous Square Fountain when we won the FA Cup. I want to go and do the daft things my mates have done. And um, I try and twist it and say, but, 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 you, but you, you, you've won it. I said, that's not the point. And yeah, I've won it, but I want to be a fan and see my team win it. Mm. You know, I went to Wembley for the Chelsea final. Full of it, and we scored after 25 seconds. I wanted the game, I, that was over the game, finish the game, like we won it, stop it now. <laughs> Louis scored the winner, stop it. We go and That's lose really the game, funny. and I've, I've got that feeling of disappointment that I've not seen my team win a trophy. My yeah. dying wish is to be in the stands, well, it's got to be style, I wish it was terraces, with, with me mates, celebrating an Everton victory, whether it be a league title or an FA Cup or a Canada yeah, way this corner. I want to be in the stands when we win a trophy again. And that will be my life fulfilled. I've done it as a player. Let's do it as a fan now. Please. That's all please, I want God. now. Please, God. Oh, please. I mean, that's what that's the for it now. Well, what an, I mean, that's a, what an unbelievable thing to have though. I know what you've shared your piece and it's brilliant. And, I, and I've, you, I've heard you say that to me before and it's like, that that's mad. But I understand, I get it. But what a thing to have to score the winner in an FA Cup semi-final when the FA Cup was still magical when it was at Villa Park when it wasn't at Wembley and I mean I guess the only blemish is the fact we didn't then go on and win it which ironically I watched a bit of it last night but we'll come on to the Cup final very quickly in a minute the European Cup winners we obviously go on we're brilliant we're, that's out the way now we're in two Cup finals there to the side 
we've got to just see this league title home now. And it's what we did. We won games. We went and wore that kit at Sheffield Wednesday, which was a, a huge victory. Andy Gray Nasty. with a, a bobbler, uh, past yeah. Mark Nodge. And then Neville yeah, makes Neville his... for me for me Neville makes his best ever save the one from Verardi. I, I always say that's far, for me that's far better than the one against Mark him, Alco or something. I think it was he he just got in front of me and just flipped it and yeah. Neville made a great a fantastic save that was unbelievable me. save. Yeah. And then we we have QPR on the Monday and the man for the important goal pops up again with a. Uh, a brilliant volley at the park at the park end again. Park end again. I'm just pleased yeah. it wasn't go, um Juba's goals panel. I wouldn't have got that one, would I? Off the off the cross, but back of Peter Hooker's head and back of the net. I wouldn't have got that one. It'd have been um the good Juba's goals panel. It'd been an no, goal no, it's Juba. your goal, Dex. Your goal. <laughs> again, it's one them. Who, who heads the ball back for me to volley? Pat Van Now mm. have a look at it. It's Pat makes the volley, and, and I get Pat, just yeah. before Sharpie. Volley it and I set off again, arms in the air, and I've got a picture uh, at home. It's it's me. I've turned and I'm facing the street end. I've got my arms up. Andy Gray's run towards me. Peter Reed's about eight foot up in the air. Didn't didn't really jump that high, but the street end's in full view and it's just madness in the street end. One of my favourite pictures. A brilliant photo I've got. I've not got many for me time, but I've got a montage of about four goals. It goes from the volley, hit the keeper, me running away. Turning around, but that one picture of me celebrating as Andy Gray comes to me and breathes it there. For me, that's a I love the photo because it just shows the street end in full view. And there, so one up, and then Sharpie gets the late one. And then, yeah, we're champions with five games left. The diff- biggest for me, the biggest disappointment is we had six games to win the league. We needed three points to win or two points to win it. We're bank holding Monday. There's 50,000 plus in Goodison Park and the Football League. Don't even consider bringing the trophy up to the presentation. It should have been done straight after the game. The presentation should have been done at Goodison Park when it was full house. Because they knew we, 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 we'd won it by, by a distance. We weren't going to lose the league. So why didn't they bring the trophy up on the Monday so we could celebrate on Monday afternoon with 52,000 people in the ground? Because on Wednesday night when we got the trophy, there was only 32,000 in the ground. There was a £20,000 disparity. But I just think the Football League should have brought the trophy up so he could have got it straight after the game. That would have really, really topped that day off for me. I mean, he did. He brought it off for the West Ham game, wasn't it? That was the that was the game we paraded round in, wasn't it? We beat West Ham three 0 I remember Ian Acton okay. scoring in that one. That was when they gave no, us didn't. they he gave didn't. us the league. He did, didn't he? I got two. Get your facts right. Come on, have a look. Did he, he flip it? West... Hang on. Did he, he scored get... against West? He scored against West Brom after the FA Cup semi final game. Oh, we yeah, we beat them. Was that 4 score. 1? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm just trying I'm to keep it going. It's good that you're. <laughs> no, you know what's good? That you're correcting me. I just remember him hooking one in at the, the end. Uh, as as the, the, the problem is, you, the, the FA, the, the FA Premier League now, the, the presentation says trophy celebrations. They're so staged. Yeah, yeah. The big stage out or firework, blah, blah. Football League an ideal chance to let the Everton fans celebrate straight after winning the, winning the title. Yeah. We'd won it with five games to spare. We were 10 or 12 points clear, whatever it was, I can't remember now. And why they never bought the trophy upon that band called the Monday, I, I really don't know. That's the one disappointment from that season. We should have celebrated on the day with the trophy. Yeah. And yeah. as Andy Gray says, that's not a trophy. I want the proper one. He was so, when he saw that little goal, there was a boy, yeah. he was so disappointed. He the silver the one, yeah. football league trophy, it's a stunning trophy. We got that two years later. Yeah, but yeah. I just wish the football league had, had done the right thing and brought it up that day because even if they don't, yeah, I didn't win it that day. We could have won it on the Wednesday anyway. Yeah, it would have yeah. been nice to have got it with fifty thousand people plus in the ground and celebrated properly instead of doing it two days later before the game and then having to play the game. But they couldn't take it away from us, mate. We won it. Nope. We, we won it by 13 points in the end, which was incredible. I mean, moving on to the obviously the two cup finals, but Rotterdam, it was just you said it before, the Bayern Munich game was really was was the game that, you know, they were the best team who, yeah. who we faced. They were a brilliant side and we beat them. And no disrespect to Rap of Vienna, but they just weren't on our level. And when I think you mentioned it before, when you look back and see some of the football that we played was just unbelievable. And the section of football in this game, there was 
about 100 passes in one that led to a corner. Just incredible football. And we, we went out and blitzed them that night, didn't we? We did. Some of the lads have been to watch the semi-final game at um, they played at Old Trafford, didn't they? They yeah, came yeah. back and replayed because some bottle throw incident against Celtic. Yeah. Um, and Howard had been to watch them and they all came back saying they're nowhere near good enough. They're not nowhere near on our level that, that half the team that Bayern Munich were. And so we went into the game full of confidence and believed that we could actually go and win the game. Um, again, the build-up again is totally different. Howard... Again, didn't change his routine out there the day before the game, night in a hotel, leisurely day the following day. If you wanted to train, he could. If you want to go for a walk, he could. He can go to the ground if you wanted to. Um, could they put the kids out early? But the thing I remember is it's the first time in our European trip that we would advise you can't have too much coffee or tea or Coca-Cola with your meal because of the caffeine in it. That's okay. the first time I, I, I realised that they might be a bit stricter with the dope testing um, because caffeine is classed as a stimulant nowadays. Um, but the game, the game was nil nil half time, and it came. We came in at half time. We controlled the game, and I got a bollocking off Albert Kendall um, at half time. And the debate sort of went, "Why were you offside for that free kick? I wasn't Gaffer. Yep, yep." <laughs> um, it's, it's one of the few times after the game when he saw the goal, I actually got an apology off him. He says, you, you're right, you were an offside. I was two yards on side when she plays the ball, heading back across, Andy Gray scores. We're going at one and a half time, but disallowed by the typical line who just sees the player when they head the ball, not the run they've made. Yeah. And um, we go in at nil nil, and but the second half, again, total control of the game. Great bit of work by Sharpie to win the ball back. Great finish by Andy. Trevor Steven gets the nick at the far post and couldn't make it 2 0. They scored a possible offside goal, very close. Mike, with, I think nowadays with VR, it might well have been ruled out. Mm. And then what do we go and do? Go on, sheets, go and finish it off for us. And we win 3 1. And again, you look at the presentation ceremony, it's, it's the one thing that when we won the league at, at Goodison Park uh, against QPR, and then we won the charity. Couple of cup. There was too many people around us as yeah. we're going around the pitch. There's too many media, too many people in the way. I would just twist they just start off and let or celebrate the fans. There was too many people around us, and that's the one of the frustrating things. And the way we got the trophy, you know, nowadays that wouldn't be allowed. It's, it's no. health and safety risk the way we got the trophy. But a very rickety set of stairs over over a, a moat. It's it's totally different now. And but the occasion was brilliant. I I, I look back with. Great memories, and uh, you look at the ground, it was a ramshackle, falling apart ground. But one end was just in total raptures for the whole of the game, yeah. You know, they, they had their fireworks and the flares and everything else, but we had the songs, we had the noise. The atmosphere in that game was, was not on a par with Bayern Munich because we were at Goodison Park, it was a nice tight ground with a roof over it, was a bit more open, a bit bigger. but the atmosphere was absolutely superb and you don't know actually talk to people who actually went what they went through to get there yeah. what they did to get there what they did before the game playing football with police in the streets and so yeah, yeah. talking to rapid uh, vienna fans mix it it doesn't happen nowadays that everyone's looking for a fight nowadays even the police looking for fights nowadays expecting violence but that was a very friendly occasion and the funny thing was after the game when we've got the, the medal in our hand and we've done the present the trophy walk around and we get in the changing rooms. Gary Stevens and she's got pulled away, I think it was the two of them pulled away for a drug testing. Had to go and do yeah. the urine samples. We didn't wait for them. We them. We them. We wiggled on, we were on the bus, I think, and they came back to the changing room after where's all the boys just two little pegs with set of clothes on. We just left them to it. <laughs> um, we, had a, we, had a, we had a few beers that night we didn't go excessive we knew we had a big game on Saturday in, in the FA Cup final but to get back into Liverpool at like 3 o'clock in the morning after coming back from Rotterdam it was and then getting to bed it, it was a it was a long day it was yeah. a long couple of days and you know and then unfortunately we, we, we couldn't quite get there on the following Saturday. would have been a fantastic achievement to do what we've done um, to win all three would have been remarkable Um we were probably one game too many that season for the boys. Um, yeah. But I do look back and I do think that it doesn't happen now. You, you, you finish your cup final, you got sometimes a two-week break before the major European final. 
Mm. You shouldn't play European final, FA Cup finals of, of any country within three days of each other. No, no. Players need the chance to recover and, and get over things. But I just think playing Wednesday and then playing another major final on the Saturday, it was just one game too many for us. Yeah, we were tired. We're, and you in Wembley, it's a, it's a hot atmosphere. If Moran hadn't been sent off, would we won the game? Because Stapler went back to centre half and was outstanding for the rest oh, of the game. And you know, if if Pat had shown right side down on his right foot rather his left foot, if Neville hadn't touched his post, would it got it? I'd have put my chance away late on in the game. If you know these ifs and buts all the time, but we look, we all look back with immense pride and satisfaction from that season, but tinged with a bit of regret that we couldn't actually finish off finish off the, and, and do the treble, which would have been an absolutely amazing achievement for our club. Yeah, oh, they'd have been unbelievable. They'd have done the double before them and every they would have been unbelievable. I mean, we were so close. We were so close. An extra oh, yeah. couple of days, an extra day maybe would have made a difference. But you're right. I mean, really, it's the post in the first half with the volley and we have the, the obviously, the Kevin Moran thing. Brian Robson hits the bar. I was thought it was you. It was Robson. He flicked it off at the bar and come out at nil-nil and, um, you know, all the own goal. And then when Reed's run through, Moran catches him. If he releases that a second early, we've got three on one because he nicks the yeah. ball brilliantly with three on one yeah. with Sharp, great running through on on um, Gary Bailey. But obviously Moran takes on. It is ifs and buts. It's a brilliant goal, but we have our chances. Andy Graham is yeah, chance. chance you know, and, and you're, me, one me, end, just... you're one at the end. The man who yeah. normally, the man for the big occasion. Just done better with it. But you just couldn't. With it. You were twisting, weren't you? It was just, it was just the way it was. But you're right. We to win two, two trophies, to get to a cup final again, and just to, you know, we won the league ninety points. It was a record, thirteen points clear. You know, we we give the last couple of games away. You know, we, you know, we've been played Luton with nine kids playing and things like that. We, you know, it, it was just an unbelievable season. And then obviously. The hammer blow was obviously the European ban. And I mean, what was that like as a player? Was that did you realize how much impact it would have at the time, or was it just oh, well, that's the way it is? We get on with it. I don't think we did realize how much impact it would have. Um, mm. it certainly affected Everton more than any other team, uh, any other club from the ban, yeah. Um, because remember, teams like Wimbledon, Coventry, Luton all won major competitions and couldn't go and play in Europe. But at mm. the time, we were probably one of the two best teams in European football. Um, mm. My biggest disappointment is I'd never, never got the chance to play in the European Cup or what they call the Champions League. Now, from yeah. 85 to 1990, I won it twice and was runner up twice, once with Everton, once with Villa. Mm. And I never once played a European Cup. And, and now you finish fourth and you play in the Champions League. It's For me, it's. It's a it's a money game now. It's about making money. But as a player in the eighties, to have that taken away from you to to play in European football, to play in the pinnacle of European football in the European Cup, as it was there, when it was a home and away knockout league, knockout mm. not a league. You know, no, I no, think no. we'd have, I think we'd have been super. That's it. I think we could well have gone on to you. Don't, you can't say you'd have won it. People say you would. Have, we don't know. Mm. Eventually, you get in the draw, whether it's home or away first leg. But we were full of confidence and. It's disappointing that we, we, we lost our, our chance. But I look at other teams who, who had the opportunity as well. You know, I don't, I do, I always said that people should not go to a football match and lose their lives. No. It could have been my mates in Rotterdam that had the same thing because the stadiums at the time were, were substandard to what they needed. They were substandard for hosting this type of finals they were hosting. But you should never go to a football match and lose your life, full stop. No. Um, but the band certainly affected the football club not just the team, but the club. The club started to break. The players started to break up because other players had an opportunity to go away to different teams to play European football. Like Gary and Trevor go into to Rangers, and then mm. then Howard decides I want to go have a go at European football at Bilbao. So Colin comes in, and Colin wants to be Colin Harvey Evans manager, not Colin Harvey managing Howard Kendall's team. So Howard Colin Hart started to make a few changes into the side. So for for two years after after the ban, it it, it was it was good. You know, we, we should have done more in, in 86. We, we were so close again. And then we won the league again in 87. And then Howard goes. And you could see the breakup happening. But I think as a club, we didn't do enough to 
keep our players at the club. Um, yeah. Those over the road kept buying the best players they could to improve the squad. I'm not being disrespectful to Neil McDonald and Mick Milligan, but when you get a bit of Gary Stevens and Peter Reid, for me, they're not life-like replacements. No. no. And we didn't do the right thing. We, we needed to invest in better players that we signed. Mm. We need to stand and say, we are keeping pushing for these league titles. When they get back into it, we're going for, for a European trophy. Maybe you could have said, because you won up with the Cup in 85, you're automatically back in Europe where you cook when the band comes in. You don't know. Sure but I just think we needed to keep investing in the in the in the playing staff. Mm. And I think the players that came in didn't replace or weren't as good as the players who were leaving. Um, no. and the other weird, side man. of the park other side of the park did that. They did they brought in the old they brought back Rush, brought in Barnes, brought in Out and brought in Beardsley. Mm. And we didn't I'm not being I'm not I'm not having a go at the players we brought in, but no no but it, it was substandard what the players were going for me. It's levels, isn't it? I mean, one yeah. player we did do in that summer of '85, we brought Gary Lineker in, and obviously he was he was very good for us for twelve months, wasn't he? Forty goals, incredible, incredible amount, and um, won the charity shield as well. And um, you scored at Leicester and then missed three games, and then come back. And then uh, one thing I'd totally forgotten as time goes on, but you played against Luton. At home, and then you missed thirty-eight matches with injury. So what? What happened? I, what, I, what was the injury? I played it. When was the QPR game prior to Luton? Was that the week the before? Week before, or two yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I played at QPR, and it was on the Astrid's air from the, the cartilage had come out with out, out, out of my knee. It come loose and detached. So um, I had it sort of pushed back in, carried on the game. Went through a week of treatment, went to see the surgeon on the Friday. Um, and he said, Yeah, that we need to go in there, have a look at that. I think the cartilage needs to come in out. Um, so went to the physio with physio with Clint and the doctors to the surgeon, came back to Belfield and I, I was struggling. I really was struggling. I, my knee was giving me a lot of pain at the time. Um, and basically the comments were, can he play tomorrow? But he's having an operation on Monday. But well, can he play tomorrow? That was basically the, the gist of the conversation. So I shouldn't have played on the Saturday because I was going in Monday morning for an operation to tidy my cartilage up. Um, so I remember playing on the Saturday and being in complete agony for 24 hours afterwards. I really was in pain. And I went in Monday for the operation, expecting to have a, a simple afterscope. Uh, they ended up giving me a three inch cut through my knee to get the cartilage out. It was so badly damaged. Uh, so maybe I hadn't played. Uh, the recovery might have been a bit quicker, but the recovery was was on track. Um, and every time I stepped up the recovery in the gym, I was no problem. I could do squats and leg raises. The minute I started twisting and turning, the knee kept flaring up all the time. Then he kept filling with fluid. So I was back to the hospital having the needle in, getting the, all the fluid drained off. Go again in the gym. Started twisting, turning, fluid come back on the knee. And it was an ongoing process. I ended up going away for three weeks down, down to London somewhere to a, a rehab centre to try and help it. Um, I ended up living on um, ibuprofen, stroke, neurofen, whatever it was at the time, for just to stop the swelling all the time. Um, and it took me a long time to get back. And it was about three or four months before I got back into the side. Um, but I had, no, I had no problems once I got back into the side. It was all right. Um, but that initial four months, if I hadn't, if I'd have set after QPR, right, get him straight in, get the cartilage ripped out. But I think playing that game against Luton mm. was the one that really affected it. I think that would, that, that probably did be more damage long term than it did than, than I realised. Um, yeah. But I came back and I felt great when I came back. Uh, I got back in the degree well. Um, but I remember actually, I actually remember coming back. If I think I'm right, you got your fifth list there. It was Chelsea at home on a Sunday. Yeah, on one the of my best mate was a Chelsea fan. So we came up on the night before, I had some friends around and I had no idea how it would give me no inclination at all that I was going to be involved in the game. So we started having a party till three o'clock in the morning. So I was absolutely walloped on, on Sunday mornings. I go into training for half past nine for what I think is a bit of treatment and a bit of training. And I would go, how are you feeling? I went, so I put my hand this way and sort of blew all the smell away from me. He said, I'm all right, Gaffer. So are you playing? I went, what? He said, you're playing. So literally... I was absolutely stunking, stonking drunk on the Saturday night, Sunday morning. 
and I played against Chelsea on the three o'clock on the Sunday afternoon. Had no idea I was playing, but I think adrenaline got me through it as well as the, the fumes. You think Kerry Gibson got scared and I was breathing so many fumes on him, but <laughs> that's the one time I played when I was actually drunk because I had absolutely no idea that I was playing that day. Um, and I remember, right, I think I actually got man of the match off the local paper or something that day because I had a pretty good game. But as I said, it's the adrenaline. But I'd missed so much. It, it, it was nice to get back into the side. Um, it, it'd been a yeah. frustrating three or four months with Brilliant and gone on. Um, because from being so successful, being in the side yeah. and playing well, to suddenly not be there. And sometimes when, you, when you're injured, you, you do feel a bit left out. You do feel like the unwanted man of the club. Yeah, because you're not you're not you're not travelling with the lads on a sat on a Friday. You, you turn up at two o'clock on a on a Saturday for the game, and you go in the changing rooms, and you, you've got to get out because they're going through their routines, and you, 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 you don't feel part of the squad at, at some times. But yeah, yeah, it, it's a time of life that I think was a was a turning point in in my probably my Everton career to be honest. Um, because I got back in the side, we, we lost the two finals, or the final and the, and the league. I got a, a rip, a, another bit of a bollocking up our Kendall for the Oxford United game, and Lynx had got his boots and couldn't score. And I get out jumped by both Billy Hammond for the one goal that scores, and I get I get blamed, but Lynx missed a hatful of goals. Goals were, were phenomenal, but uh, you haven't got the right boots on, they were patched up with more bits of leather and tape you care to mention about. And then we lose the cup final again, and that and that was that was devastating. I had a, a couple of down weeks after that because we, yeah. I think we should have won both, and we the best, I think we're still the best team in the league that season. Um, but the best teams don't always win things, and that's been proved over the years. Um, we just didn't have enough on the day to win it. And then you know you look back and go, again, two years on the bounce, we could have been double winners twice if we'd have just had. It's three games over two years. Yeah. It's three games every time. It's not as if you've blown it. You know, you look at the team, look at Leicester and Lee by 10 points, about four or five years. Tottenham mm-hmm. right next to them, and all of a sudden they, they lost the momentum. Well over, yeah. you know, we, Liverpool that year won 11 of the last 12 games. Um, you know, so did we lose it or did they win it? You know what's, but, what's really, in, I mean, first of all, like 38 games, I couldn't believe you missed that many. In all competitions, that is, obviously. Yeah. Um, we had the great. We got to the cup final again. Great win at Phillip Park, Chef Wed. But the two get everyone talks about Oxford, and I brought this up. I brought this up with Aidan Eater. Brought it up with Brace when we've done him. We had two away games: Forest on the Saturday and Oxford on the Wednesday or Tuesday. And we drew nil nil at Forest. And if we'd have won that, which I remember rightly, mm. we should have won on the Saturday. No one would have spoke about Oxford, and it was mm. two away games. We didn't score in either which was totally unlike us because we scored goals for fun that yeah. season. To not score in either of those games ultimately cost us the championship. You know, we we yeah. proved that on the Saturday. We beat you score and Lineker get to Atrick. We beat Southampton 6-1, but, you know, obviously they Liverpool won down at Chelsea, didn't they? And mm. then... You it's, know, not, it's fine margins, but it is very, it very is. fine margins in the game. And, you know, Lynx always says he didn't have his favourite boots. By all account, they're in the bottom of the box, but he couldn't find them, and he can't wear any of the boots apart from his favourite ones. And mm. you know, are we looking for excuses? I don't know, but we were so close again, and yeah. it's it's disappointing when you look back and you think, you know, two years on the bounce, three games, two in the yeah. Wembley, one in a, in a league, yeah, and we could have been sitting here talking about Everton being double double champions. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it, it's it's so fine, but you know. That's football. We, we gave it our best shot. That's all I'm saying. We, all, oh. we we never quit. We gave it our best shot. We we we, we played until we, until we were literally dying on our feet at times. We we, mm. we kept on going, and that, that's one thing I, we should be proud of. We never stopped. Oh God! Well, listen, unbelievable time in our history, and like I said before, privilege to witness it. You'd, I've finished runners up in both. Obviously, um, you you made. I mean, the, you know, you got into the team 83, 84, 47 appearances, three goals. 84, 85, 58 games, 14 goals. And then that season, 85, 86, 19 appearances, four goals, the drop-off. I mean, do you think because of that injury, that was one of the reasons why Howard went and bought Dave Watson? Yes and no. Um, It it came out in Simon Hart's book. Um, Mm. Here we go. Yeah. Um, I'm... 
an, an epileptic. I've had yeah. two grand mouths in, in my career, in my life. And one of them was in the summer of 86. Um, whether that played a part in the decision of Howard to bring Dave Ross in, I also got Qatar Aru Dubala pre-season trade, pre-season match in the Rotterdam Stadium again. Um, but when Howard was signed, Dave, I was I was fit. I would always say I walk, but I was fit. I think Howard had a, a long-term worry about was my knee strong enough, was my knee fit enough, will he have any more of these epileptic fits? I don't know. I've not had a fit since. I went from 80, 86 when we signed Dave to, 2000, to, to just under 99, 2000, played another three or 400 games. So my knee certainly held, held up. I've not I've not fitted ever, ever since. I look after. I try not to put to a situation where I might have another fit. So I'm <laughs> luckily I'm, I'm fit free since. But I think that did play a bit of a. How it did think that maybe it's you know I, I've got nothing against Dave Watson. I've got a lot of time for What a footballer. What a person. What a servant to our football club. Brilliant. But I think both of those things swayed Howard's decision. To bring David, um, but I do. I, I was fit when Dave was signed. I wasn't. I wasn't in. I was fit when Dave. I was hoping to name on the bench for the charity shield, but Howard didn't name. I think he put Ian Moss on the bench. I think that game. Um, but I, I was fit, and I was disappointed not to be on the bench. And then I got back. I got back in the side because Kevin and Dave didn't have a great start to their partnership. And mm. um, I went and played three at the back down yeah. at Southampton. Um, and then Dave got injured, and Kevin and I played the next. I think it was eight or nine games together. Um, I think it was one defeat in that, and we, we got back to our... And then we were playing Newcastle in the full members' cup on the Tuesday, and Howard pulled me and said, look, yeah, I'm not going to play on Tuesday. Dave needs a couple of matches, so I'm going to mm-hmm. play him on Tuesday in the full members' cup. You're back in the team on Saturday. Okay. And on Friday afternoon before the Norwich game, he, I think it was Norwich at home, he pulled me and said, I'm not going to play you. And we had a... A bit of a stinking argument, um, and I stormed off, and I never went to the training Saturday morning, and I went the game on the Saturday. Dave got booed by the fans, which I don't agree with. It's it's not his fault. The manager made the decision. He just paid a million pounds for this kid, um, and really, that was for me. That was the end of my Everton career. Um, I think end of that season, I ended up being taken around the country as the, the, the 13th man of 12 people, the 14th man of 13 people. He always had one or two extras. So I'd, I'd travel away at night in a hotel, then sit in the stands, then go and get changed, run up and down to the pitch to do fitness where I thought I came back. And I was one game short of my, of my medal. I had 13 games that season, um, 86, 87. Um, and last game of the season, Howard put me on the bench against Tottenham. Um, they were going to Wembley on the Saturday against Coventry. Yeah. So they weren't they weren't fully interested in getting kicked or injured. They were looking look after themselves. Um, and with about twenty minutes, half an hour to go, he says, "Come, come, get we going on." So I remember sitting on the bench, warming up, getting back, chin pads on. Right, you go on, you go on up front and take an inch off. Okay. So. What you don't take an inch off? He's a defender. Bring your mouth your And the foul, there's a foul behind the dugout screaming. And, and I ran up front. You're going the wrong way, Matthew. Get to the other end. So I went up front and I had a, and I had a blinder. I think I scored the winning goal at the crossbar, but I cut the stage off the keeper. And that one game, um, Howard made sure I got, so I got the medal. So thanks for that, Gaffer. Um, but, and then Howard went and then Colin came in and, and, and Colin tried to set his own stole on it. But then in the October, November time of 87, I... Took the, I was captain of their team over at Les, Elite, and yeah. one of our young yeah. midfield players um, tripped. There, he, he'd lost his man, and the lad, the lad had knocked it too far. And I stepped across and took the ball and passed it to the left back. As all that chipped the fellow from behind, who fell on the knee, snapped me, me, cruised, me, me the ligaments. So then I've got another five months out because I've got a ligament repair. So my career on the Cotton Army was, as a manager, was struggling because I literally. Um, got injured, got back in the side, and then became the 13th man again. I was getting cast around the country, yeah. playing his 13th football on a Wednesday night after being away at QPR on the Tuesday or other way around. So I was getting carted around. I was losing my appetite for the game. I was losing interest in the game. I was getting down and depressed a little bit. 
end of the season, um, Colin wants me to go away on the end of the season tour to Magaluf and say, Gaffer, I don't feel part of this squad at the moment. I don't want to go. Um, so I, I didn't go. Um, while I was away, there's been a bit of interest, I believe, from a couple of clubs. And when I came back, Villa put an offer in. Um, spoke to Colin, went down to Villa, spoke to Graham Taylor, and straight away got a feeling it was the right thing to do. Um, the hardest thing to do was to leave out of a football club. It was It's my club. Uh, it's been a team I've supported all my life. My club's not the way. It's, it's our club, but it's the team I've supported all my life. Yeah, and, yeah. I, I just wanted to start playing football again. And leaving was so, so difficult. But I could see football the following season at Villa where I didn't see football at Evan. I had one year left on my contract. If I'd have stayed, could I have ousted Kevin or, or Dave Watson? I'll never know. But I didn't see myself at the current situation playing many more games at the Evan first team in my last season at the club. I left purely to play football. Um, I had three and a half great years at Villa. Nearly won the title again in my second season there. Yeah. But that, that decision to leave Everton was really, really difficult. Mm. But as I said, it was purely done for football. I could have stayed. I could have stayed and sat in the stands, but I didn't want to sit in the stands. I wanted to play first team yeah, football. Yeah. And that was a really, really tough decision to leave the club. I look back and think maybe I should have stayed give another year under Colin. But I do believe I wouldn't have played many games if I stayed. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Such a... Such a sad way to it, because you like you, you know the trophies you'd won. I mean that season, eighty six, eighty seven, you played twenty games all together, four goals, and still scored big games. And then you're right, to, you know, Colin come in and nine appearances in your final season, and most of them from substitute, you know, substitute yes. appearances. What what was the last game you played for us? Can you remember? Oh gosh, no, I can't. To be honest, you'd have to tell me now, wouldn't you? Derby County at the baseball ground, 2nd of May, 1988, 0 0. So another clean ankle sheet. Deep. Ankle deep in mud, probably as well. <laughs> probably. That'd be dry mud in May, wouldn't it? But, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, Derby didn't have, Derby didn't have dry mud. Derby was no, no. Mud. They, yeah. used to, they used to water the pitch very heavily at times. <laughs> Come on and paint the penalty spots, didn't he? <laughs> uh, do you know that you finished your Everton career with a, a goal every five and a half matches? as a centre-back league league appearances, which is, some strikers would be proud of that. So It's not bad, is it? It's uh, not, I think, not bad you know, at it all. Was nine, was it 19 league goals in 100 starts mm. or something? So, yeah. you know, it's one of them. I, I didn't set out. See, I, I, I tell you people, I'm, I'm always renowned for my goal scoring. I think I wasn't a bad defender at the same time, but no one mentions no. the defender. They always talk about the goals. So I should, I should have said he's a centre-forward striker. Or centre forward defender. I'm not sure, but everyone remembers the goals. But I might be think we defending him wasn't back at the same time. Well, I'll, I'll, your trophies will tell you how good a defender you were, won't they? That's a, you know, you you missed the trick. Maybe you should have said to Colin, "I'll go up front," because obviously was, uh, hey, you had the knack. Didn't bother me. You wouldn't bother me at all. I play anywhere to put the blue shirt. I don't even play now up front of a good dude. <laughs> but unfortunately, my body won't let me anymore. No, it happens through us all. It's grim, isn't it? Derek, listen. Thank you so much for taking a lot of time out your day today. It's been a brilliant chat as always. Uh, can't wait till you can come back in when this is all no. over. You can get back in the studio and we can have a, a laugh and all that. But yeah, thanks I look so forward much. to you, mate. Thanks it's so been a difficult time, time for everybody. So uh, good luck. Stay safe, everybody. And we will be back at Goodison Park. Might not be for a while. <laughs> or the studios but uh, we will be back sooner or hopefully sooner rather than later but it's been a difficult time for everybody so just stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing football back on the telly in the next couple of weeks there you go big thanks to Derek Monfield make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and if you want more videos join us on Patreon see you later